contacting your list. The mailers is the, you know, the, the oldest type of marketing there's been. Uh, it's extremely expensive right now. I don't do it. Um, it's very expensive to do direct mailing. Uh, you got to pay either a company or you can do it yourself. I mean, we used to handwrite the letters and the envelopes ourselves when I started and that was working very well, but we see a transition in the market at the Michael, uh, Michael, the cycle always changes. So what, one thing that we've seen with the market is when I got started, people were pissed at corporations because we were just coming out of the 2008 crash. They were pissed at companies and corporations. It's all their fault. They crashed the whole market, right? So what was working is handwritten letters. Anything that looked like it was coming from a person to person. And it was my wife and I want to buy your house. My family and I want to buy your house. We were doing those post handwritten postcards. We were killing it with those. We were doing very, very well. What happened is like everything, marketers screw all, it, all of it up. So too many people came in the market doing the same thing. Now people got burned out from that. Now they want back to companies and official people. So they want nicer letters, more professional. They want to see better business bureau ratings. They want to see that you have a website. You know, they, they want to see if you're a realtor. Believe it or not, being a realtor gives you a certain level of credibility, a certain level of, uh, you know, like they can trust you better, even though I've seen some stupid ass realtors. So it, it, they don't know any better, but it helps you in the long run. Um, so there, you can use a lot of that stuff, uh, but the direct mail is still, it's very, very expensive. You're looking at, depending on what it is for postcards, about like 75 cents to a dollar. And for letters, you're looking at like a dollar 20 plus. I mean, it gets, it gets pretty pricey, you know, because this whole game is volume. So you can't just market to a hundred properties and hope you get a deal. We market to thousands of properties every single month. You understand to get a few deals a month. So it, it's volume you got to do in direct mail. When you do volume, it's going to be pricey. It's not saying that it doesn't work. It's just expensive. Then you have door knocking. Um, for the brave few that want to do it, I started off doing door knocking. It is not fun at all. You get threatened. You get shotguns pulled on you. you yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the nicest thing. You know, it's not, it's not very glamorous, but we do it with very kind of, that's at the point that we'll do it with more niche list. So let's say we've, uh, we got like a foreclosure property and we've called it a bunch of times. We text them everything. We see like there's potential on this deal. We see that there's a potential for a lot of equity and stuff. And we're like, damn, these people are just not pick it up. We'll go and knock that door. Right. But that's just one off properties that we'll knock. Um, another form of door knocking that we like to use is whenever we're renovating a house, We'll door knock all the neighbors. Um, we door knock all the neighbors. We give them a card for two reasons. One, they're great security system. You tell neighbors that I'm renovating this house. If you see anything funky, let me know. My God, they will tell you about everything that goes on in the neighborhood. Who the shady people are, who the drug dealers are. Like they tell you everything about it. But the reason I do it, the second reason I do it is like, if you happen to know of anybody, let me know. And we'll go ahead and uh, help them out and give you some kind of referral for doing that. Just that alone, last year, we picked up three properties from one neighbor that he recommended. Like he, he'd been there for decades, knew everybody in the neighborhood. And he gave us three properties that zero marketing money at that point. You understand? So that's another way of doing door knocking that's very successful for us. Um, but not a strategy I recommend all that much for like just going and door knocking lists. It's going to take you forever, forever to do it. Phone calls is by far my favorite. Uh, we call it cold calling. Um, when you talk about direct to seller, direct mail, you're sending off a mail piece and you're hoping somebody calls you back at some point. Cold calling, you are calling these people directly. You're speaking to them. What I like about cold calling, you get a million first impressions. You can call somebody today, you screw up the call, you piss them off, whatever it is. You hang up, call them back two weeks from now, it's a whole new call. Because they didn't see you. They don't know who you are. You understand? You can switch the number. You can do a million different things. And as you're getting started, this is why I tell people start with cold calling versus direct mail. You need volume to get good at talking to sellers. Because that's the biggest problem with most people. They suck at speaking to sellers. And it's understandable. You've never done it before. So in order to get through that fear much faster and get better at talking to people, you want to make sure you're on the phone with these people as often as possible. 
direct mail, the leads come in so few and far between that you're never going to build up that kind of, um, I guess that, that, that kind of like comfort within you to be able to speak to sellers in a good manner, to be able to develop rapport, to be able to analyze a deal. You're not going to have that kind of experience yet. But if you do cold calling, you're going to be talking to so many people so frequently that picking up the phone is just going to be nothing. You understand? And if from personal experience, when I first started, I did what was called, I don't know if it's on here, but uh, I did what was called bandit signs. And these are those little signs that you put up on the thing. My phone would ring. I would look at that phone like it was a monster. I was not picking up that phone. I was so scared. I was so scared of screwing it up. I didn't know what to say. What if they asked me these questions? What if this? What if that? And I would just look at the phone or just look at it and stop ringing. I'm like, whew, okay, that stopped. You know, stupid, right? I'm spending money on all this and I'm not doing it. So cold calling gets you beyond that fear much faster. I, have a, uh, I do coaching one-on-one and stuff for people getting started. I had a student that was showing them how to do cold calling. He is, and, and this is not even a joke. I'm, I'm like, all right, make a call this seller. He, I mean, I couldn't even vibrate at the frequency he was vibrating. I was like, dude, you're going to disassemble your phone. Like, I, I, it was impressive how much he was vibrating. I was like, what are you so afraid of? He's like, I don't know what to say. I was like, ask them if they want to sell their house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? So it builds that, that experience and it gets rid of that fear. Because every conversation you're going to have when you talk to sellers, when you talk to anybody, most of it is going to be over the phone. And if you're afraid to be on the phone, if you're afraid of the phone, you're already losing out. I mean, you, you're already hurting yourself tremendously because every single deal at one point or another is going to end up on the phone. You got to get good at be on the phone as fast as possible. And this is a, another reason I like it is so affordable. Cold calling is very affordable. You're not having to spend the level of money that you're having to spend for direct mail or even bandit signs. Cold calling, the way it works, once you generate a list, you're going to use a service to skip trace that list. Skip tracing, when I got started, it was between $15 and $25 a property. Right now, skip tracing can be anywhere from $8 to $0.15 cents a property. So it's come a long way. Um, but skip tracing, all it is, is you're going to find a service. Like we use skip pours, skip genie. Um, we've tried batch skip before, but I like skip pours better. They have better data. Um, and launch control. If you do for SMS, they have a skip tracing service that is actually pretty decent. Um, so those are skip tracing services. You're going to put in the property address, the per the person's name, and if they have a mailing address. And that service is going to skip trace th those data points and try to find the most likely phone numbers to those people and sometimes email addresses. I suggest you hit them all, phone numbers and email addresses. They're very good for marketing. But once you compile that list of phone numbers, now you start cold calling or text messaging those people. Both are really good. There's a service that we like to use called Call Tools. It's an automatic dialer. You put a list in there and it calls three numbers simultaneously. You can blow through a list of like couple, uh, in my VAs, we do about like 600 calls a day, right, per person. And that's because it's calling three numbers at a time, and as soon as somebody picks up on the other line, the dialing system stops, and you're able to talk to that person. So instead of like, you know, dialing each number, waiting, hanging up, dialing the next number, waiting, hanging up, this service calls all three at the same time. So it's good for speed and everything, but it's going to run you about like 140, 150 a month. So not necessary to start with. I started with a Google voice number and just dialing it myself. It's your finger's not going to break. Um, and, it, and it works very well too. So that, that's what skip tracing is. And you can also send text messaging. I've negotiated whole deals on text messages. It blows my mind. I'm not buying a couch, but these people would not get on the phone with me. So I'm negotiating the whole deal through a text message. I'm talking about buying a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house through text. Like it's insane. I don't I don't get it, but people are afraid of the phone. So text messaging is another way that once you skip trace it, it gives you that opportunity. So that was a lot. Any questions there on any specifics? Yeah. Excuse me, this is the same way you would find expired listings, like you just find the nice name of the owner on the property. Expired listings, they come how do you get the phone number and like start calling and cold calling? 
or you just have to knock on their door? For expired listings? No, we'll skip trace them too. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll you pull the expired listings uh, from the MLS, or you can use Deal Machine as well to pull expired listings. They're actually pretty accurate. Um, you'll pull the expired listings, and we'll use the same data uh, parameters, and then go ahead and skip trace them and give them a call. And I'm calling the the homeowner at that point. Yep. And if for whatever reason you can't get a hold of the homeowner, then I'll probably go ahead and try to contact the agent and see why he didn't sell. It's just, eh, you're not going to find the agents very, being very helpful. Yeah. You mentioned VAs. VAs, yeah. Uh, where, how? So VAs, virtual assistants, we use them from the Philippines. Uh, I have a headhunter that I use, and uh, her name is Chrissy. Um, I can give you her email if you guys just shoot me an email asking for it. Um, she, she'll find the VAs that you need that have like cold calling experience and stuff like that. And the only place I use them is either managing data, pulling data, or just blasting through the initial cold call list. Why do I have them blast through the cold call list? Because when you skip trace a list, you're going to get anywhere from one to 10 possible phone numbers per person. That's a lot of freaking phone numbers. And the majority of them are going to be bad numbers disconnected, wrong numbers, whatever it is. That's what I have my BA do. Go through all this. I want you to find the phone number that belongs to the owner that owns that house. That's all I want them to do. I don't train them to close. I don't train them to sell. That's my job. I'm the closer. You understand? I need somebody that's good at closing. They don't know our customs, our, our mannerisms. They don't know any of those things. So I've tried to train them before, but there's, they, they don't even understand the sarcasm from here, right? We're marketing to a $150,000 house. The person says, sure, I'll sell it for a million dollars. Oh, great. Could you tell me a little bit more? I'm like, no, they're telling you to go F off in a really nice way. You know, like they don't, they don't get those things. So I have them just running the data. And then this is again, no knock on them. Like they're very, they're the hardest working people I've met. I mean, I love having VAs. I, I've, at one point I had up to like seven VAs working for me. And they were great. I love using them, but for just those things. So I have them blow through or even send text messages. I have them go through like launch controls of service that we use for text messaging. And they're just, they're there, boom, 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 sending all the text messages. And I gave them like a, a, a certain amount of uh, responses that I'm looking for. Whenever they, these responses hit, they let me know. They're like, hey, John, they got this response. What do you think? So then I hop on and I'll have a conversation with these people. You understand? So I'm using them to get rid of all the nonsense beforehand, right? Because it, it becomes very time consuming. But at the beginning, for the first couple of years, I was doing all that work. So don't be you know, afraid of doing the work. A lot of people try to outsource this stuff before they even understand it. You know, you can't outsource cold calling if you don't know how to cold call, because you're not gonna know what they're doing right or wrong. You're not gonna know how to teach them. You're not gonna know how to educate them. Do it yourself first, be good at it, then you can outsource it out. Does that help? Did you have a question? Yeah, bro. Uh, are you seeing it more, being more effective through text messages with Blast right now or straight cold calling? Because that's, I'm not really seeing too much on text messages. I'm seeing more of cold calling. I want to get your opinion and kind of see. So the issue we're seeing with cold calling right now is a lot of the services, they're, they're, a lot of the carriers, we used to pull lists and let's say out of, the, we'll pull a 2,000 property list, skip trace it, we can get probably seven, 8,000 numbers out of that. Out of those seven, 8,000 numbers, there were possible do not call numbers were like 500, 600 numbers. Now all of a sudden, like over a month of, of change, we went from four or 500 numbers to 4,000 numbers on the do not call list. I was like, get out of here. I, these people did not know how to get on the do not call list. This is the carriers pushing them over to that list, right? So I'm like, and this is police, I'm not an attorney, I'm not at a CPA, this is not legal advice, do your own stuff. But I'm like, F you, I'm gonna call these people anyway, right? Because, you know, it's if not, like you killed more than half of my numbers. So cold calling has become an issue with that, where with text messaging, we're having much better uh, reach rate as far as that goes. So we're actually able to reach more people through texting than cold calling than we used to. So, but we're still doing both because it's just, it's a hit or miss right now between each one. Does that make sense? So, I mean, the, the do not call on the carriers, they're getting really annoying. So I think, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what changes are going to happen, but 
uh, I'm, I'm maximizing the amount that we're doing because I could definitely see it at some point just being like virtually impossible to get a hold of anybody. So what I'm trying to do is, like I said before, I need my VAs to go as quickly as possible, connecting the phone number to the person that owns the house. And all these people, I'm creating a whole database on those verified numbers. Because as we move forward, if for whatever reason, the cold calling stops or these platforms stop working, I can still hit these people because I have the data. Does that make sense? So, so that's kind of how I've been using that. Well, yeah, and then email, uh, emails as well. When you skip trace, you'll get emails. Um, I'm starting to do emails right now, like literally right now. But I'm starting to do it because a buddy of mine that does a lot of volume on this, he's like, yeah, I started doing emails and I've gotten like two deals in the last month. And I was like, well, no shit. You know, I've never done emails before, but I'm starting to do emails now. Yes, man. Is there a trick to keep it from going to spam? No, no. Uh, services there, you know, you have your Google service and everything. The only trick I would use is try not to do more than like 50 a day. And those 50, try to spread them out throughout, you know, a few uh, um, per hour kind of thing. Uh, that way you're not like, it doesn't show up that way. So it's a little bit more tedious, but it's going to minimize your chances of going to spam and, and therefore increase your chances of them actually seeing it where other people that blast 500 emails, you know, probably all of them are going to spam. So you can do two and get better reach. So does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. So that's what I, I would do with that.